Madrid is fascinating. It's a large city with lots to discover. The Mi Hotel is a historic building in the heart of the city. You know, I love traveling with my Max Light 2 by Travel Pro because it's so durable and it's light and it just moves so easily whenever you're traveling. The Reina Sofia National Museum Center of Art has a modern facade combined with an old building. This is one of the oldest cafes in Madrid. People love to congregate and socialize in sidewalk cafes. We are in Plaza Mayor, which is uh, probably one of the most significant squares that we have in, in the whole city of Madrid. The very origin of this square goes long, long ago. Uh, I mean, we don't exactly know when it started to have the businesses, but they say that the Hebrews, the Jews, uh, people who lived in the city, start doing businesses in this square around the 14th century or 13th century, even before. Uh, the very beginning, it was small little houses around the square where the people will be selling uh, meat or, or, or bread or grain uh, for people to, to grow. Felipe II decided that uh, Felipe II is the king who brought the capital to the city of Madrid. So he decided that this square, seeing all the, all the, the, the market was famous around the city. So he said, okay, many people go to this spot out of the city to do, a, to do market. So let's build a proper square. So it's when the first square is going to, to pop up. Uh, Diego de Silleros in 1590 uh, does the, the, the very first building. But as you can see nowadays, the nowadays building, uh, all the buildings here are 18th century. Why? Because uh, this square has suffered so much fires through the history. The first square ever made here, it was in 1590 uh, by order of Felipe II with, by Diego Silleros. It was, uh, nothing, it was uh, just four small buildings, nothing compared with this, mostly made of wood, and this caused fires. So the fires of, of the square have taken the square down a few times in the history. The square has been rebuilt at least three or four times through the history. The latest we see here is from 1717 approximately, so which means 18th century. In the 1590, Diego Silleros built the first square that we're going to see in the city, but this square will burn. And then through the history, the square of Plaza Mayor is going to have suffering three or four different changes, at least. The latest change is in the, the latest building that you see right now here, 18th century. It's Herrerian style from Juan de Herrera. It's in 1770, the latest ever done by José de Villanueva, the architect. The King Felipe III is the one who ordered the construction of the latest and everything would have to be made in stone and the wood will be forbidden. Why? Because of all, of all those prior uh, fires that, ha that happened here. Uh, here, the square that you see today is the main spot where traditionally um, inquisitorial uh, courts has happened. By, with Felipe II, a lot of people by inquisition was killed in this square. Also, executions were happening in the square uh, through the history, but it will have golden ages with our King Felipe IV in the 17th century, which is the king who gave most movement to this square. In this square will be happening bullfighting, theater, music, anything that you can think of, it will be happening here, and that will be under Felipe IV. Today, what we have around the square, it's uh, houses, so people actually live here in the square, obviously it's a very pricey place to buy a house. I wouldn't mind to have one, but uh, it probably comes from families from the past. Uh, the two major buildings that I wanted to show you are this one here, the one I have right behind me, which is what we call the House of the Bread. Uh, the House of the Bread is because uh, the government decided that all the bread and all the meat, which is the house over there, 
will be distributed from here to all the markets around the city. So the whole distribution of bread and meat will be done from here by the government to the markets around the city. Uh, with the time and the, and the plagues and, and, and all these factors of uh, not hygienic, uh, the, the government decided that uh, street markets of meat or food are going to get out and all the, um, all the markets are going to happen in, in actual marketplaces. Uh, and when we get out uh, of Plaza Mayor, we're probably going to see one of those markets. Uh, San Miguel Market, it's new market, but Madrid has uh, all over the city loads of markets. So the distribution of meat and bread will be coming from this place. Food markets are where one can find fresh produce, meat and cheese, and of course wine. One of the major events happening right now in the city of Madrid is every Sunday. We have a huge market around in the, in the, in the lower parts in the, of, the, of the square, where mostly you're going to find coins, old coins from all ages of the history of Spain, and stamps. It's very well known for stamps and coins. So if you are a stamp collector or a coin collector and you come to visit Madrid, on Sunday this is the place you have to be. We are going to prepare Tinto de Verano. Tinto de Verano is Summer Tinto, try, try. Uh, and uh, well, it's what we call the fast, the quick sangria, okay? Para él, para el señor. The quick sangria is the one we drink most in Spain. Uh, so don't get thinking like, oh, sangria, sangria, sangria. We drink more, most this than sangria itself. And it's as easy as this, wine, tinto, and sweet water. It's that we call casera o gaseosa. So you just pour your wine. Usually it has to be table wine, cheap wine. Nothing very fancy. You're not going to spend, uh, I don't know, ten dollars on a bottle to do this. So one bottle of this, maybe cost you in Spain one euro fifty, something like that. And the sweet water. For you. Meditando en el tiempo los errores hasta borrar de mí todas las faltas así podré cantar Love walking the old narrow streets of Madrid to view the old architecture Alegría con el alba el vigor expresivo de mi acento limará las aristas que me nazca The Grand Boulevard is lined with historic buildings. My name is Enrique González, I'm natural of the city of Madrid and uh, here we are going to show you Puerta del Sol. Puerta del Sol is the heart of the city. Actually in Madrid, uh, most of the roads that go around the Spain part from this point. This is the zero kilometer of, of Spain actually, right in the heart of Spain. Uh, Puerta del Sol is probably the square that has suffered most of the changes through the history in the city of Madrid. Uh, it has happened a lot of uh, historical effects, but the very origin of the city, it comes to the name of the Muslim gate, uh, the gate of the sun. It was a huge gate that was closing the Muslim uh, fortress, and this gate had a sun uh, on top of it. And that's why today we know it as the gate of the sun, even if it's not a gate. Today this is a square, but we don't call it square, we call it gate. Uh, as if you look around, that guy over there, it's our King Charles III which is the person who made all this happening. He was not only king of Spain, he was also mayor of, of Madrid. And we consider him in the history of our, of our country to be the best mayor that Madrid ever had. Uh, Charles III uh, is the person who decided that Madrid deserves something better, not only 
a, a small little villa and uh, he started narrowing and making bigger, wider streets. Alcala Street, which is one of the widest in Madrid, and where the Prado Museum area is. Uh, we see today Prado Museum, is the Triangle of Arts, we call them. It's where you can find the Tissa Morning Mitzvah Museum, Queen Sophia Museum and Prado Museum. All that was built by that king over there, Charles III. And uh, if, uh, over there we have a building uh, which used to be the last, the old post office building. Today is the presidency of the community of Madrid. But also, and the most important fact of this building is actually that every 31st of December uh, is where the Madrileños gather here in this square to commemorate and celebrate the new year coming. Uh, eating in, uh, the grapes, 12 grapes. I don't know if you do that in America, but here we take 12 grapes, we eat 12 grapes. Uh, if you look at the top of there, there is, a, there is a clock and there is a little dome and that dome, inside of that dome, there is a little metallic ball. Uh, that ball will be rising down, making a little noise like ding, 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 ding. And then all of a sudden, when it comes the time of 12, we'll have 12 bells up to the 12, which is the 1st of January. Uh, those 12 bells that we listen, every time we listen one bell, we take one grape. In the square we can find also the symbol of the city of Madrid, the, our seal, let's say. The seal of Madrid, it's the representation of a bear and a tree we, that we call Madroño, Madroño tree. This tree is a pretty big white tree that gives some little fruits like that, which can be yellow or can be reddish. And there is a liquor we made of, of, this, uh, of these little fruits. The fact is that bears love the tree because legend says that if you eat lots of those fruits right away from the tree, many, many of them, you get also tipsy. So the, the history says that the trees love to go there and eat many of those fruits to get tipsy. It's very important for you to know that it's a she, she she's a female and represents fertility. So like, like the birth of new Madrileños on the future. I want to give a very special thanks to Alliance Global Assistance and Tripatini.com for making this trip to Spain possible. Cuenca is a hip neighborhood where young people hang out. Welcome to Mi Madrid. Uh, my name is Jose Arinos. I'm the Aura Experience Manager for, for, for this property in Madrid. Uh, you are staying here in one of the most emblematic hotels in the, in the city, in the old town, in the heart of Madrid. The building is one of the registered historical uh, buildings of the city. Uh, it was dated on 1811. It was not always a hotel, but since like 1900 it was uh, a hotel. We reopen, or the Mi Baimelia, or the Mi Madrid Hotel, reopens the doors a little bit more than four and a half years. And uh, from outside you still see the historical building, but once you enter the hotel, it is totally a different atmosphere. Uh, they or the designer uh, refurbished all the interior part of the hotel and once you get in the hotel you have the um, feeling that you are in a total different world so you enter from something more classical to something just uh, modern in design. Uh, we have 192 rooms in the hotel you are in uh, six different floors all by the same designer. The sixth floor is all with beautiful suites you can choose uh, with terrace, with jacuzzi and the nice of all the, the whole hotel is really not the, the just the um, accommodation. The Mi by Melia brand is a, a really a, a personalized um, uh, experience-based uh, hotels. One of the most attractive things in the hotel is our the roof. It's a beautiful rooftop terrace on the seventh floor, so you're 
just looking over uh, over the whole Madrid, and and there is always something happen. So and also the nice uh, of this hotel is that you have a lot of local people. The hotel is a really good situated. Three steps from the hotel, you have like the three most important museums, which is the Prado Museum, the Reina Sofia, and the Tessa Museum. Also, all the, the shopping areas near here. So the Me by Melia brand was born. Uh, four and a half years, uh, beginning with this Mi Madrid Hotel, um, from the big uh, international company, hotel company from Spain uh, called Melia Hotels International. The Mi Madrid Hotel was the first and we have already like four hotels. We have one in Barcelona, we have in Cancun, in Cabo and the new flagship hotel will be open just in, in, in the middle of, of July, the Me London. People love to congregate and socialize in sidewalk cafes.